Tonight on The Readout. For me, the hours come for a new generation to lead the Democratic caucus that I so deeply respect. And I'm grateful that so many are ready and willing to shoulder this awesome responsibility. Give the lady her flowers. Her historic 20-year run as Democratic leader is coming to an end. As generational change comes to the House Democratic leadership in the wake of a midterm that defied the historic odds. Meanwhile, House Republicans are doing exactly what you'd expect, ignoring the lessons of the midterm elections and focusing on Hunter Biden. Plus, the blue wave that hit Michigan and Pennsylvania and what Democrats will do with their new power on the state level. Michael Moore joins me later. We begin the readout tonight with the end of an era. Today, Nancy Pelosi, the first and only woman to serve as Speaker of the U.S. House of Representatives, took to the House floor to announce that she will step down from Democratic leadership after an historic two-decade tenure leading House Democrats. The announcement comes after Republicans regained control of the House in the midterms. Pelosi said she will remain a member of Congress and serve out the term to which she was just reelected. But she is paving the way for a new generation to fill the leadership ranks. The number two Democrat, Steny Hoyer, is also stepping aside. When I came to the Congress in 1987, there were 12 Democratic women. Now they're over 90. And we want more. <laughs> Indeed, American democracy is majestic, but it is fragile. Many of us here have witnessed its fragility firsthand, tragically, in this chamber. And so democracy must be forever defended from forces that wish it harm. Last week, the American people spoke, and their voices were raised in defense of liberty, of the rule of law, and of democracy itself. With these elections, the people stood in the breach and repelled the assault on democracy. They resoundedly rejected violence and insurrection, and in doing so, gave proof through the night that our flag was still there. Also stepping aside, the great Jim Clyburn. Nancy Pelosi may be departing, giving up, may be departing and giving up the reins, but her legacy atop the House dais will surely endure. Pelosi was first elected to the House in 1987, shortly before the year of the woman would alter ever so slightly the makeup of Congress. Through talent and sheer will, the same will that would later help her advance major legislation, Pelosi rose through the ranks, becoming Speaker in 2007, saying she had cracked the marble ceiling. She became Speaker a second time in 2019 when Democrats rode a wave of opposition to Trump to win control of the House. She was re-elected Speaker in January 2021, presiding over the most diverse House membership in history. Pelosi also had a knack for breaking the Internet. From pointing her finger at Trump during a congressional meeting, note, she is the only woman visible at the table. Trump had tweeted the photo to degrade her, but Pelosi liked it so much, she made it her cover photo on Twitter. Earlier that year, she'd given Trump a literal clapback while giving angry auntie during the 2019 State of the Union address. And then she went viral when she ripped Trump's printed State of the Union speech in half. And remember this? How could you not? Pelosi making a grand exit from the White House in this Max Mara fire coat. This was after a contentious showdown with Trump, a coat so meme-tastic it had to be reissued with a sunglassed Pelosi looking triumphant. Fashion aside, she oversaw groundbreaking legislative accomplishments, like helping to ensure health care is a right and not a privilege. Here's Pelosi emerging as a powerhouse, piercing through throngs of Tea Party, anti-Obama protesters, while carrying the gavel that was used when Medicare was passed, as she and congressional Democrats, including the late great John Lewis, marched to the Capitol before the health care vote. Nevertheless, she persisted, only to later lead her chamber during one of the darkest days for our democracy, when it was threatened by insurrectionists who stormed the Capitol. There has to be some way we can maintain the sense that people have that there's uh, some security or some confidence uh, that government can function and that we can elect the president of the United States. 
Violence would strike again, this time in the most sacred of spaces, her home, when her husband Paul was attacked in October. A reminder of how women politicians, and especially high-profile ones, are so often under siege. It was only one of the many challenges Nancy Pelosi stood up against, which is why today President Biden described her as the most consequential House Speaker in our history, who will never waver in protecting our sacred democracy. And joining me now is Congresswoman Madeline Dean of Pennsylvania and Nadim El Shami, who has served as Pelosi's chief of staff when she was minority leader and currently is a policy direct is the policy director for Brownstein Hyatt. Farber Shrek. Thank you both for being here. And I, I do um, want to start with you, Congresswoman, and ask, what was the mood in the chamber as Speaker Pelosi gave that really eloquent and epic um, sort of final address as Speaker? I'm sure she'll speak again, but that was sort of her, her, uh, her outro. Well, Joy, great to be with you and Nadim. Nadim, you and I didn't get a chance to serve together, but man, oh man, you served her so well and you served our country. Uh, I have to tell you, there was a bit of breathlessness uh, in the chamber. Uh, I sat with an awful lot of my colleagues, happened to be surrounded by a lot of women, members of Congress. We recognized the historic moment that we were on the precipice of. Uh, but she spoke with grace and majesty. And she was incredibly Speaker Nancy D'Alessandro Pelosi, revealing her constant love of country love of family, belief in the rule of law, belief in our Constitution, and that our better days are still ahead. Uh, it was just a, uh, uh, I have to tell you, I, I, I found it both joyful order. and sad. Yeah. As she said, it was a season, you know, there, there is a season for everything. Uh, and so with that, we understood what she was doing. Uh, and I have to tell you, I just feel like I'm one of the luckiest people in the world to have served alongside her. You know, and Nadim, it is the essence of class to know when to leave the stage and to know how to leave the stage and to do so with the grace that we saw today. You know, this is this is Nancy uh, Alessandra Pelosi from Baltimore. Let's not forget from Baltimore, representing uh, a great city of Baltimore uh, who serves in the city of San Francisco, the equally great city there. Talk about what it was like to work for her. Oh, gosh. You know, thinking about the, the days I spent uh, working for the speaker, and I've always called her speaker, whether we we're in the majority or the minority, right? She will always be speaker. Um, it was a master class in politics every single moment, every single day. She cared deeply about her members, as Congresswoman Dean knows very well. She cared, uh, she cared deeply about the issues, and she continues to strive no matter the consequences, no matter the hurdles. Look, many of us felt that, hoped that this day would never come, but we knew it would. And just like any legislative battle, just like any uh, thing that she does, she did it strategically, methodically, and has set the stage for the next generation of leaders um, with a strong Democratic caucus heading into next Congress. I, I am going to talk about some of the next the, uh, the next leadership, which she's ushered in, which is actually epic. I mean, we're talking about the diversity of it, the, you know, the diversity just of you being on her staff, Nadine. But we're going to talk about that in a second. But I have to play all of, for all of you my favorite uh, Speaker Pelosi quote. I think I always call her Speaker Pelosi, too, no matter what. But uh, Speaker Pelosi, this is my favorite Speaker Pelosi quote. Here it is. People laugh when I say it, but I always say to oh, candidates, and especially women candidates, when you come into this arena, you're in the arena, you're going to have to be able to take a punch. You have to be able to throw a punch for the children. <laughs> I have friends who literally just text me, you have to be able to throw a punch for the children. It's like a, our favorite statement. But I mean, that was right after the insurrection had happened. We went over to the Capitol to interview her. And Congresswoman, her, just to her sense of, she understood the majestic around her. She understood the meaning of the Capitol. She has an in-depth meaning of, you know, strategy, as Nadim said, but also of the purpose for it. And she always would bring back her policies. Every time I've interviewed her, it's about the children. It's about doing this for children and to make sure that our children have what, you know, we didn't have. And, and talk a little bit about that, because there were some tough votes. Health care was not an easy vote. Obamacare, Democrats paid a big price for doing it, but they thought it was worth it. 
Well, you know what? I have enjoyed these past more than four years because she helped me on my campaign four years ago. Uh, and she always, whether it's in a public setting, a campaign setting, a political setting, or in private, just speaking her to her one-to-one, -one, she always goes back to, Mad, make sure you know your why. And her why is always the children. And so it is a master class being around Nancy Pelosi of grace, of class, of knowing your subject matter, of mastering your subject matter, but making sure you know your why for the children, for the future. That's what she's done. Uh, she's yeah. the most historic uh, uh, speaker of the House. And what I love, I have to tell you, is the day I got sworn in, uh, in January of 2019, I was able to have my granddaughter, who was maybe six or seven at the time, in the chair with me, in the well of the floor. And she went up onto the dais with Speaker Pelosi, whom I always call Speaker also. <laughs> and, and so up she went. And so my granddaughter doesn't think of any difference in gender doesn't think there's any barrier that a woman could do this job. She knows that, of course, a woman can do this job. And in fact, Speaker Nancy Pelosi did this job better than anybody else.